what exactly they are trying to ask you, what you mean by pair and unpair, then you can just click on this helps here, whereby we will open up another, you know, another, um, okay, SRM, you know, uh, information here to actually help you to identify, oh, okay, don't worry, okay, you know what, okay, here are the helps here, okay, to how so you can understand the differences between a pair versus the unpair. Then before you come back, okay, again here, they say, oh, you know what, uh, so in this case, right, okay, I probably would like to go for the uh, pet one, okay, then I click to next, then they will say, okay, is it interval ratio or was it, for example, I just choose and choose one, and then likely that they will go to suggest that, okay, that in this case, it is good that you use the Wilcoxon sign rank test, and if you are not very sure what test is this, then you just click on here, and then they will give you the test. So the whole objective here is that, all right, it gives you, okay, a very simple way of identifying, okay, the right statistical test that you can use to verify the data you collected. It doesn't really matter whether it is a qualitative or it is a quantitative analysis, right? Because uh, it really depends on the property of the data that you collected and what are the things that you would like to compare. Because different statistical tests, okay, are used for different methods. I hope I answer your questions. Okay, so uh, I will try to translate it uh, a little. Uh, oh, okay, can, 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 can. Okay, <laughs> to Desvi. Yes. Uh, Desvi, uh, apakah bisa menangkap uh, jawaban dari Mr. Lim atau uh, perlu di terjemahkan sedikit uh, intinya gimana gimana boleh diterjemahin sedikit sebenarnya udah dapat tapi takut salah persepsi salah gitu okay. uh, salah tangkap <laughs> jadi sebenarnya uh, ketika Steph menjelaskan, uh, menjelaskan tentang which test uh, which stats test uh, itu hmm. sebenarnya kita tidak bisa tidak tidak terlalu harus membedakan apakah penelitian kita kualitatif atau kuantitatif karena uh, both uh, apa kedua kedua metode tersebut sebetulnya terkadang tetap membutuhkan uh, apa kejelasan uh, apa uh, data uh, analisis data nah yang perlu ditekankan tadi oleh uh, dr lim adalah uh, bahwa kita researcher kita adalah peneliti kita bukan statistician kita bukan ahli statistik kita gitu. jadi uh, memang kita tetap membutuhkan uh, feature ini untuk membantu kita seperti itu makanya uh, such research method ini sangat bisa sangat membantu kita untuk memilih uh, tes statistik mana yang perlu kita uh, pakai untuk menilai atau menganalisis uh, data kita seperti itu oke okay. Gimana Desvi? Hmm. Ya, yeah, udah lebih ya, udah paham. Ya bisa lebih jelas ya. Iya, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> udah lebih paham sama penjelasan Ibu tadi. Okay. Cuman okay. tadi memang dia dokter Ki nah. yeah. jelaskan yeah, bahwa ya okay. bisa bisa nangkap maksudnya bahwa uh, walaupun mau jenisnya kualitatif ataupun kuantitatif uh, memang method search ini bisa digunakan gitu. Iya. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, betul. Okay, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, next question, uh, Dr. Lim. Yes. Uh, in the us in the chat room, any suggestion to keep the novelty on the research? Uh, because uh, sometimes we are using the same method. Uh, how to check the novelty? Uh -huh. Oh, novelty. Okay. Now, methods. Okay. Uh, this is a very good question. Okay. Novelty is not uh, about. Uh, methods itself. Okay, novelty is not about the method itself. So basically, right, when we talk about the novelty, we are talking about the originality of your research. All right, that means uh, what exactly you are trying to address. So for example, like, okay, survey itself is a method, right? Everybody can use survey. So we are not, we are not, okay, looking at, okay, whether you, you if you use survey as a method, then your research are not novel. Is the questions that you are trying to address, is it the only one, the first one that is available in the world? Okay, so that's what we actually, as a researchers, okay, as an editorial, that you we usually look at. What are the scientific contributions that you have made to the, uh, to the academic field? So for example, right, today, when we start to actually do our research, the very first thing that you have to actually come out is, you have to very identify very clearly what is your um, objective. Okay, that means that what are the questions, the research questions that you are trying to ask and what are the problems that you are trying to solve, right? For, for you to, in order for you to ensure that you have a good and strong research questions that is, you know, uh, nobody have done it before, you need to do what we so-called a background check, right? And when we call a background check, usually in our academic field, we call a literature search and literature review. 
Yeah. So when we try to do a literature search, what we are trying to do is that you are going to read all the different journal articles, you know, uh, all the different books, you know, try to identify what are the available informations, right? What people have done, right? So far, what are the development? And then uh, what are the white space, meaning to say what are the area, the gap that people have not do anything yet? Yeah. So from there, you'll be able to identify, okay, uh, is there any uh, opportunity for you to go in and do your research? All right. That is what we so-called, okay, the, 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 the originality of the research, okay? So this is the thing that you're looking at. But then now you have a question and you want to solve this problem. Then you need to think about how or am I going to solve this problem? And we call this research design. So when we try to design the whole thing, right, there are a couple of things that you need to consider. One of the very important things is that what methods you are going to use. You get me? Like for example, if today I want to find out, right, okay, um, okay, for example, today uh, I, 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 I came up with a new, 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 new device, anything, okay? And this device, right, whether it can be effective or not, but then I need to find out a method to do it. Now, the methods can be done, let's say, for example, give you the, the most easier one, okay? Let's say survey. But the survey itself right, can be done via online or I can send out papers, you know, and then you give me a paper form. So it can be a physical survey or it can be an online survey. But if today I want to do an online survey because it's more effective, it, because it's cheaper. So the next question is, are you doing a quantitative survey or a qualitative survey? So a quantitative survey means that, okay, I will just send you a form. Do you like it? Yes or no? Straightforward. Yeah? You cannot be yes, no, or maybe, okay, no opinion, neutral. But in, when I ask you a qualitative survey, then it's very different. A qualitative survey means that, okay, I was going to ask you, do you like it? You say yes, or maybe you will say no, or maybe you say you are neutral. And my next question is really qualitative. Means that, why you say so? Why you say you like it? And then you are going to explain why. And this thing is something that me as a researcher cannot control. Because different people will give me, that means uh, infinity response. Okay, the, the reasons that why you like it can be so different, so uncontrollable, and we call this qualitative. But before that, I ask you, do you like it or not? So do you like it itself, yes or no? So it is a quantitative. Then later I ask you why. Then you, you explain every way that you like. So it becomes qualitative. So it is actually a combination of qualitative versus quantitative. And we call this a mixed method. Okay, so, 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 so in other words, right, okay, does this actually address Okay, the problem or the question that I would like to solve. If it does, uh, then that's the reason why I choose what we so call a mixed method. You got me or not? Okay, so later, right, when I defend, okay, my journal, or when I defend my thesis, right, I have to be very clear, okay, in writing down why I choose this method, you know, and then later when you come to the examiner or maybe the reviewer, they may think for you or maybe stand on your shoe and challenge you and question you why you choose this method. Why don't you just choose one particular method then it's enough, solve the problem. Why must you go through this, you know? So you have to actually defend yourself and justify why this method is good, right? So, uh, so this, is, this is something that, okay, I want to actually let you all know that choosing a method, right, the, the, is the originality, okay? All this, right, actually goes back or falls back, right, into, okay, what are the research questions that you are, you are, you are, for, you are, you are, you are forming? So once you're focusing on the research, uh, I would say, you call that what? Okay, the, 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 the research design, right? You choose the methods, right? Only then you proceed to collect the data and so on and so forth. So if I'm allowed to share my screen again, okay, now, um, yeah, okay. So this is the thing that just now I've, I've, I've shared to you guys, right? Okay, so basically, right, you will notice that, okay, the design, all right, okay, before you come up with a design, you must have a questions to solve. All right, and the question to solve right will determine okay, whether your research is original. It doesn't really matter what kind of methods that you select because survey is just a survey, right? Okay, you can use survey, I can use survey, everybody can use survey. So if we use the same methods, it doesn't mean that your research is, it, 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 it doesn't mean that your research is not original. Your research can still be original, depends on whether the problem that you solve, the new knowledge that you contribute is original. So that is the key, that is the key part, yeah? So if you look into the, uh, this thing, okay, which we call the project planner, okay? So you will notice that right under the, this one, right? Okay, developing a researchable question is before the research design, 
Okay, you can see that. Okay, so this is the research design, right? But before that, you are going to develop a research question. And the research question is the one that determine whether your research is original or not. So if the question is unique in the world, that means that you ask a question, nobody have a solution for that yet, uh, then you, your research is original. But of course, uh, it depends on what type of research that you are, you are talking about. We are just, the one that I'm talking to you is about application research, meaning to say, I have a problem, I have a question, somebody is trying to solve for me. That could be what we so call the uh, a basic science research, meaning to say, I'm trying to find out or explain a phenomenon. All right, so I'm proposing or hypothesize a theory. Uh, that is actually called a basic science research. And this kind of basic science research, right, usually, right, um, how to say, uh, you, you, you have to actually come up with a hypothesis, right, making an assumption saying that I realize there's this phenomenon, but nobody can explain why. And you were trying to come up with an explanation why this thing will happen. And you have to actually prove it scientifically. All right, does it make sense? Yes? No? <laughs> Can or not? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Excuse <I guess>. me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I. 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 I know. I know. I. I speak a lot. Okay. If um. If if it is difficult, feel free to ask. Then uh. Maybe um. Dian can actually yeah <laughs> can help me to translate. <laughs> I can actually explain yeah, yeah. more. Yeah. I understand. Mm. Uh. It actually uh. You answered a lot of questions in uh, in mm. chat room. There are three uh, questions about can, can. what you explained uh, before. Jadi memang ada pertanyaan uh, dari Salomo Depi tentang kalau penggabungan mm. metode kuantitatif dan kualitatif apakah bisa menggunakan stage pub? Barusan juga sudah dijawab oleh Dr. Lim. Uh, jawabannya adalah bisa dan uh, Uh, kita juga bisa pakai method maps di situ ada tentang uh, gabungan mengenai kuantitatif dan kualitatif atau uh, mix method ya kita sebutnya hmm. itu sudah terjawab uh, lalu ada juga mengenai penelitian ah oh, ada ada yang belum terjawab uh, there's another hmm. question uh, Dr Lim about uh, how to check our research is good or not uh, it's actually um, a little bit Uh, same with the other question about novelty, <laughs> but this is about uh, how to check is mm. uh, is it uh, good? Is okay. my research is good or not? Okay. <laughs> Actually, uh, this is a very subjective question, meaning to say, uh, how good is good right now? Okay, how 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 poor is poor? So it's, it's always relative. All right. So it, it it really depends on. Okay. So me as a researcher, okay, to me there is not not so called uh, good or bad research. I only say that, right? Okay, how much contribution have you made in compare to what has already exist? You got I me, mean? okay? So if people have already done so much and your contribution is just a little bit more, okay, then I will say that, okay, it is a weaker research, right? But you have to convince to the, let's say if you are going to write a paper, right? You have to convince to the reviewer saying that your contribution actually worth to publish into a research paper. Now, uh, I'm not sure how many of us here Uh, master, how many of you are PhD or many, how many of us here are actually a real researchers, right? So the expectations are actually very different, okay? Like for example, um, I guided a master students before, okay? The minimum requirement that we expect from a master students is that, okay, you have to do a quantitative, not quality, yeah? quantitative proof, all right, of a certain research. Because in this world, there's a lot of uh, theories that are coming up but there has not been proven quantitatively. So at least right, that is a minimum requirement that for a master right, in order to get the degree. But for a PhD, it's different. We are looking into the critical mindset. Right? How critical you are actually right, discerning the problem, looking from all angles, ensuring that the theory that you came out is not easily being pushed down when the examiner asks you. You get me now? So have you think critical enough? So we are more looking into have you really contribute, okay, a new knowledge? That means uh, new knowledge, okay. So of course, if you are doing the basic science whereby later your research was being cited and formed the foundation of a lot more research, then you see become very impactful. You get me now? So can we say that impactful research means it's good, good research? Well, it's still very subjective because not everybody's research are basic science research. And you have to understand the words itself. Research means that we rediscover what is unknown, right? So very naturally, right? So today, if you would like to rediscover something that people do not know, naturally, you would like to contribute. But your contribution depends on whether it will be cited or not 
that is actually depend on the research question and how critical when you think about the problems that causing this problem. So if you think very deep enough, if you are a critical thinker, the question that you come out very often will create a huge impact because once you determine a factor or a matrix that you come out, then that will actually affect a lot more research in the world subsequently. Uh, that, that's the reason why we say, oh, this is a good research because it has attracted a lot of Con, I mean, it's a lot of citation reference that people based on your research do further. But if you just want to solve a problem, let's say a problem that's locally, okay, okay, that's only happened in, let's say, uh, in an island, <laughs> only, only the island have this animal, then your problem is not a major problem in the world. Naturally, people can say that, oh, you know, your, 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 your contribution is there. People can still grant you a PhD. However, your contribution is not as impactful as the one that's solving a big problem where the whole world is, is, is facing. Does it make sense? Okay, so actually there's no right and wrong okay, to it. It's about the amount of contributions that you can make to the scientific world. Okay, now there are so many researchers okay, around the world, but we, we, we cannot say that everybody has the ability or actually have the resources to solve a big problem because at the end of the day, right, we have to be realistic, right? For many many reasons. Number one, when we do research, right? I want to ask you a question. Okay, how many years? Okay, can okay? Does UPI allow you to do your PhD? Twenty years cannot be right. <laughs> cannot be right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Five years yeah. or three years? Three, three or four years. Right. Okay. So you have time limitation. You get me now. Okay. Yeah. So how are you going to do your contribution within that that time frame? Mm. So that's the reason why, right? That's... <laughs> yeah, not, not everybody, you know, when I first become a PhD student, then the, the, the three years later, I become a big researcher. Cannot be. Research is actually incremental. Maybe the very first step when I gave my PhD, I spent three years in solving one problem. But I continue my research after my PhD become a postdoctoral. And I continue to expand my research after become, when I become an assistant professor. And I continue and continue and continue. After 10 years, being in the field as a researcher from PhD until postdoctoral until a professor, all is continuous. Finally, I make a big change. You get me or not? And that actually takes a longer time. Does it make sense? So that's the reason why sometimes time is actually one of the critical conditions that you need to consider. Number two, all right, do you have the, uh, I would say resources? Now, for example, right, okay, um, it really depends on the university. Some of the, uh, for example, like COVID, for example, you, they, they want to do research on the COVID, but does the, does the university or maybe they provide that kind of lab facilities? Not everybody has the access, right? So this is something that you also need to actually consider, right? Then of course, the next thing is about funding. Mm. Research is expensive process. So to yes. some extent, right? Okay, yes. we all will actually burn money. <laughs> so when we don't have access to the money, right? Then it's sometimes it's very difficult. Like for example, I say I want to do research and my research is to face-to-face -face interview, but I don't have the money to travel to Sumatra. <laughs> <laughs> or to travel to Kalimantan how am I going to do it so I have no other choice but to change it the other way around say why not I do it online but then if I do it online does Kalimantan the, 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 the small little village that I want to interview do they have good internet uh -huh. so infrastructure is another problem so as a researchers we face different different types of challenges that we need to solve but it's not something that you know um, it's so simple so when we talk about all these right, we need to consider all of these as a complete solution, right? So before you can actually determine, okay, what is a researchable question? Is it doable? And then what kind of research design I can come up? What are the, de uh, the methods that I'm, I'm going to select? Because when we consider all these, here are all the factors that we need to factor in. And very importantly, okay, whoever that's doing your master or PhD now, you are going to have your um, supervisor, right? Uh, so your supervisor usually is the one that is actually experienced. They understand, they know, all right? Okay, here are the challenges, here are the things, okay, so and so forth. They are supposed to give you tips and saying that, okay, what, what, what we plan to solve is actually important, but we may not be able to solve this. Or maybe they will tell you, okay, I have tried this before, okay? <laughs> many, many years ago. Trust me, it's not working, all right? What? Okay, too imaginary. Let me okay, make it more practical for you. Then they will give you advice how you narrow down in order to solve that problem. Okay? Yeah, I hope that I solved, uh, I answered that question as well. Okay. Semoga uh, Taufikur Rahman, uh, apakah bisa menangkap jawaban dari Dr. Lim? Hmm. Sedikit, Bu. Sedikit, apa yang, uh, ada yang harus bisa dijelaskan lagi? Uh, ada yang 
atau uh, apa namanya itu takutnya salah gitu bu apa oh, ya, gimana, gimana? pemahaman uh-huh. bisa di bagian mana yang uh, kurang jelas mungkin saya bisa bantu hmm. apa dalam <laughs> Sebenarnya sih apa terlalu cepat itu bu apa eh, bahasanya oh, itu jadi ya. iya bahasa okay. Inggrisnya bu, jadi kurang <laughs> apa kayak luplok gitu bu. Okay, okay. Jadi sebenarnya <laughs> begini uh, Dokter Lim itu tadi menjelaskan uh, let me try to uh, explain it a little bit ya Dokter Lim ya. Okay, okay. Uh, Please, jadi uh, tadi Dokter Lim itu menjelaskan uh, keti- ap- tidak ada baik atau buruk dalam penelitian yang penting adalah bagaimana penelitian itu memberikan impact. Dan impact itu sendiri tergantung kepada uh, di mana anda berada apa yang apa tujuan penelitiannya. Jadi ketika anda misalnya ingin melakukan penelitian yang memberikan uh, ingin ingin mem- melakukan penelitian yang baik yang uh, yang memberikan impact ke seluruh dunia itu itu akan sangat bagus sekali memang. Tapi ketika uh, anda misalnya melaku, berada di sebuah pulau kecil uh, di mana impact penelitian yang mungkin hanya sebatas pulau itu saja itu juga sebetulnya sebuah penelitian yang baik baik tapi mungkin memang impactnya tidak tidak berlaku baik untuk ke seluruh dunia seperti itu jadi tidak 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 bisa memberikan penilaian karena sin- karena baik atau buruk sebuah penelitian itu sebenarnya nilai sangat sangat subjektif apalagi ketika anda misalnya mengambil PhD atau mengambil master misalnya tentu anda akan ter uh, apa terlimitasi terbatasi dengan uh, time limitation dengan batas hmm. waktu berapa lama anda uh, akan melakukan penelitian itu tentunya akan sangat membatasi uh, apa penelitian penelitian yang bisa anda lakukan seperti itu tentunya fasilitas infrastruktur dan uh, funding keuangan itu juga akan sangat mempengaruhi penelitian uh, yang bisa kita lakukan seperti itu Taufikur Rahman barangkali uh, lebih jelas ya. Iya bu, lebih jelas bu. Terima okay. kasih bu. Oke okay, sama-sama. Uh, Oke okay, dokter Lim, uh, hmm. there's another question from uh, Firman Aziz. Uh, yeah. Bagaimana memastikan metode penelitian yang kita gunakan tepat atau tidak? How to make sure that the research method that we use is the right one or not? Because, oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, he say in Indonesia there's a lot of uh, human area home, social social research hmm. and human yes. era that you're yeah. using uh, research and development, but that hmm. uh, they can't uh, use them to uh, send them or send them them to uh, journals. Okay, I, for, I understand. For no, no. Uh, the, the the first the first part is that okay. How how. How do we actually ensure the methodology that we select is correct? And the okay. second part is what in Indonesia they got a lot of what hu- hu- a humanitarian or what? A lot of research on social and humaniora, humanity, humaniora. humanity, humanities, uh, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, using okay. Uh, research and development methods, and that uh, method of research cannot uh, be sent to journals. Mm, okay. How is okay. That? Um, Okay, this 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 these questions, right? Okay, um, will de- okay. I I I I split into the first part and two first second part first. Number one is how do you determine the right methods to do it? Okay, and in fact, the SRM today's training, right, is the entire core, okay, of the values that why, okay, UPI would like to subscribe these and to help all of you as a researcher, right? Okay, now, um, seriously speaking, right? Okay, different methods will have different outcome. Okay, when you do your research, right? Some of the methods are better than the other, but every method itself has its own limitations. Not every method can solve every problem. So you have to be very clear on what exactly you are trying to solve first, and then you design, then look into your funding, your accessibility, your resource, everything, before you choose the methods. Okay, so this is very important, mm-hmm. right? So very simple question that you have to actually answer is simple. Before you start a research, right? Before you come up with a researchable questions, you read literature review, right? That means that uh, you study other journal, full text, right? Yes, no, everybody stare at me. <laughs> yes, right. Okay. So if you study other people's research, right? Everybody's research will have a methodology section, all right? Study them as well, all right? And then I want you to think critically. Okay, uh, so now, now it's really about okay, a uh, 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 higher level training. Uh. I want all of you to think critically. All right? You need to start asking questions, meaning to say, right, why that person used that method? Right? Is that method 
really able to solve the problem or there's other methods better? You have to keep asking this question, all right? You yourself, is it, are you convinced that this method is the best method to solve this problem? If not, you read more, right? You study the methods, understand what is the limitations of the method because you will need all these when it comes to defend your thesis, okay? Or you need to actually make it clear in your paper why you choose this method, right? Because this is the questions that your reviewer, the editor of a journal, will also look into it and ask as well. Does it make sense? Okay, so you cannot just say because people say, oh, I use this method, then you just accept wholeheartedly without question. <laughs> that is actually during your primary, secondary education. Teacher tell you something, you just take it. Take but it. now <laughs> okay. you are a researcher. You cannot work this way anymore, all right? Okay, if you are still undergrad, I can accept. Professor tell you something, you just take it as it is. But now you are a master and above. You must have that critical mindset and ask, are you sure this is the right way? Why? Is there no better way of doing it? And then you go to study more, right? You must challenge it. Because you have to understand, the paper that you read, right, may not necessarily be the latest. You know, we don't always read the paper in 2019, 2020, bukan? Sometimes we will read the old article, which is in 2010. You have to understand, 10 years ago, the technology is still not there. And that's the reason why they use that method. So 10 years later, you cannot use the same method because new technology came out. Does it make sense? Like for example, 10 years ago, we are not common. Okay, 20 years ago, I never even heard about Zoom. You get what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So to do this kind of online interview is almost impossible. But can you refer to a 20 years old paper and still tell me, oh, online interview is not possible. That's why I choose paper. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot write. Okay. So your paper can easily be challenged by reviewer. Does it make sense? So that's the reason why. You have to look into the time frame of all the papers that you read. And then you have to actually think critically. Is it still applicable today? Does it make a difference, right? So I hope that I answer, okay? So to, to find a good question, okay, a, a good methodology or not, you have to start thinking critically. Make sense, okay? If you never think critically, your methods will be easily asked by people. If you're not sure where to find the methods, research method is the place where you're supposed to look. Okay, uh, so since we are here, so I might as well just, okay, highlight a few more, okay? Okay, so, okay, here, okay, under this one, okay, we did actually mention about Okay, um, okay, research design, right? Under the research design, all right, we will actually say what method you, you choose and what the method should I use. Uh, these are the simple one, okay, for the novice, that means the young researchers. But if today you have already determined a particular method that you would like, definitely you would like to solve it, okay, then what you're supposed to do is very simple, right? Depends on what are the things that you would like to focus on. You may be focusing on qualitative or quantitative analysis, but if you're focusing on qualitative analysis, look, in, look into all the various methods available before you make a conclusion. So if, for example, today I do an interview, and in the interview, right, you know that somebody is telling you a story. So it's actually, you're supposed to actually discern the story, humanities, right, social science. So it becomes a narrative analysis. And you want to see under narrative analysis, do I have more different methods to look at? So some of them is personal narrative. Some of them is telling you the whole life, life history research. So if this is the things that you would like to look into, then you can click in further before you find all the papers, okay, all the information related to so-called personal narrative. That means uh, somebody is telling you a personal story, the experience, okay? So from here, right, okay, if you want to justify, you want to justify whether the method is good or suitable or not, okay, other than reading a book, one of the things that you can consider is looking into what we so-called the cases. Okay, looking into the cases, all right? So very simple, you just unselect all and you select the cases that you have access to. Okay, now look into any of the cases, okay, that you, 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 uh, that you are, you know, that, that you like that's relevant to your, to your field of studies. And from there, right, remember just now, okay, they are always, always right, okay, you go into the methodology. Okay, go into the methodology section. Under the methodology sections, right, okay, they will, I think I, I clicked wrongly. Okay, you go into the methodology section, okay, you go into the methodology sections and they will actually explain to you, right, why a particular methods are being chosen, okay, in the 
in a particular cases. Okay, so what do you mean by a case study? Okay, a case study basically is a is 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 is, is like a researcher explain explaining to you. Okay, that when I solve my problem, all right, I choose a particular method, and the problem that I'm trying to solve includes A, B, C. All right, and they will tell you when I choose this method, the reason why I choose it, how it is able to help me to solve the problem, and I'm aware if these methods that I've chosen. Do they actually have any limitations, any constraint, right? So this is something that I need to be aware. So when I write my paper or when I write my report or thesis, I need to be very clear, telling people that my research has this boundary. Anything outside here are not included. Uh, then you are safe because you have the critical mindset. You understand what can be done, what cannot be done, right? And your research outcome. That means that the result that you find out is based on the assumption that these, these, these are there. Make sense? So if you can actually make, a, I mean, when you present your re research, right? Okay, in this more comprehensive methods, right? Then people will convince and then the people will not have more questions to ask you, asking you, oh, you know why? How come you never consider this? How come you never consider that? Okay, okay. So this is the part one of the question. Uh, maybe I will let I will let Abu Dian Xian explain <laughs> before we go to part two. <laughs> I think it's very okay, lengthy. Okay, later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, jadi uh, Firman Aziz. Jadi kata Dr. Lim ini uh, bagaimana memastikan metode penelitian itu tepat atau tidak? Uh, tipsnya adalah dengan banyak membaca jurnal-jurnal dan uh, melihat atau menganalisis metode penelitian yang mereka gunakan, tapi tentunya dengan memperhatikan time frame, dengan memperhatikan uh, tahun berapa jurnal itu ditulis. Jadi uh, kita harus benar-benar melihat uh, metode itu digunakan berapa tahun yang lalu. Apakah masih sesuai dengan dengan uh, saat ini bagi, dalam penggunaan uh, um, teknologi atau lain sebagainya. Dan yang yang kedua tips yang kedua adalah berpikir kritis, think critically. Dan always ask, uh, jadi selalu bertanya, tanyakan kembali ke dalam ke dalam diri kita, tanyakan kembali mengapa penulis itu menggunakan uh, metode penelitian yang itu seperti itu. Kenapa menggunakan hmm. uh, metode penelitian A atau penelitian B? Apakah uh, ketika saya akan meneliti hal yang sama, apakah saya juga bisa menggunakan penelitian itu? Nah itu harus terus uh, berpikir kritis, tanyakan. Banyak sekali bertanya dan tentunya harus banyak membaca uh, seperti itu uh, hmm. Firman ya, Firman Aziz. Uh, mungkin begitu Dr. Lim atau uh, Firman Aziz mungkin mau langsung bertanya? Uh, Sudah cukup. Sudah dibuka? Sudah, Sudah okay, cukup. Ya? Ya. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, next uh, part uh, too much, terkait too much dengan... information. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you Dr. Lim. Thank you Dr. Lim. Okay. You're welcome. Um, is there any next questions? Yeah. Uh, next question. Um, okay, okay. Let me see. Let me see on the chat room. From Ayula, uh, raise hand. Pertanyaan sudah ada chat room sih, tapi kalau mau langsung silakan. Ayula Hidayah. Okay. Sudah di chat room sebenarnya. Uh, <laughs> silakan langsung. Saya ulangi lagi. Saya ke bisa bahasa Inggris, Bu. Tidak apa. Silakan Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi semuanya. Eh, selamat siang semuanya. Saya Yuan Jaya. Saya ingin menanyakan terkait uh, penelitian. Karena uh, mungkin tahun depan saya akan susun tesis. Jadi, uh, saya ingin menanyakan. Nah, jika kita yakin menggunakan, telah yakin menggunakan metode penelitian kualitatif, sedangkan dosen mungkin menyerahkan untuk melaksanakan penelitian kualitatif atau mungkin sebaliknya. Nah, eh, biasanya mahasiswa itu suka ragu. Nah, bagai, apakah eh, kita harus berpegang teguh pada pendirian kita atau memilih metode yang metode penelitian yang disarankan? Karena dilihat dari permasalahan yang kita alami, mungkin tesis itu atau mungkin skripsi juga dibuat eh, berdasarkan permasalahan. Eh, kita punya alasan dan teori yang cukup kuat untuk penelitian dengan metode yang kemudian mungkin ah, mungkin ya maaf berbelit-belit yang kedua <laughs> eh, tips gitu agar tembus artikel atau jurnal internasional karena saya belum pernah kemarin saya sudah coba tapi gagal oke okay. <laughs> ya. okay, okay. terima okay. kasih sama-sama kembali waalaikumsalam oke okay, dokter lim uh, 
the question is actually uh, that she uh, has a problem with her uh, pembimbing. Uh, pembimbing apa ya? Supervisor. Supervisor. Supervisor, okay. <laughs> supervisor. Oh, supervisor. Okay, mm. she has a problem with her supervisor uh, that she she actually wants to do a qualitative research, but her supervisor is uh, she he, he wants to. Uh, she wants the research to be a quantitative research. So uh, mm. if if she actually has the uh, reasoning in doing qualitative, uh, mm -hmm. which should mm. she choose? Uh, whether she uh, follow her supervisor or keep on doing what she believes? That's the first question. Okay. Now, um, um, Having having a uh, different opinions, right? Okay, shows that right. Okay, you are someone uh, that you can think yourself rather than take instructions. That's good. All right. Since you are able to think independently and think critically, okay, let's don't take any questions. Okay, between you and the supervisor personally, meaning to say, right? Okay, you okay, you don't you don't take it personally if the supervisor disagree. We have to learn to accept disagreement. Right. When people don't agree with the, your methods, right, you have to actually find out why. All right. And at the same time, you find out why from the supervisor that why he chose to ask you to do the other qualitative or quantitative methods. Okay. There must be a reason. Just as I told you earlier, <clears throat> it could be because the professor have done it before and he has proven that the methods that you are proposing is not going to work. So he tell you, don't waste your time. <laughs> yeah, it's true, you know. Sometimes we are less experienced. That's, that's the reason why we need a supervisor to guide us. This is number one. Number two, as a supervisor, he don't say that, oh, you know what? Because I feel like this is the right way. No, he won't say I feel. He will actually back up with a scientific reason, telling you, explaining you why it is. And you go to think critically in a sense whereby, does it make sense? If it really does, then you just follow what he said. Because you have to convince yourself Okay, whether this, what, 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 what he recommend to you, right, actually explains later that you are going to explain to the rest of the people, right? If you think this way and professor think another way, and if you are not convinced, right, then you are not going, you, are, you cannot follow the professor's way because, okay, you do not understand, okay, why he disagree with the methods that you have chosen, okay? So you must think critically in the sense whereby asking, why, why, why? Meaning to say, in terms of scientific, is there a reason that you ask me not to do it this way? All right. If he said, oh yeah, that is a reason, he explained to you. And then, right, that, that reason is going to be used when you present in a conference as well. It, when you are going to write in your paper as well. If, if uh, okay, it is not a good reason, right, then your research will never get published. You get any or not. So that's the reason why, right? In the first place, you just need to find out the fact rather than okay, take it okay in 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 in, in a personal. Now, number two, if you are still don't agree, what you I will suppose you to do is that you can seek second opinion. Hmm. The whole school cannot be only one professor, right? <laughs> you can seek second opinion, all right? But this is not okay. This is not. This may not necessarily okay be the case, all right? Because you understand, right? Okay, professor. They don't say that oh, because oh, I like this student, I don't like that student. That's the reason why they try to you know, play you out. Most of the time, they just tell you, telling you it's because maybe because uh, we, have, we have limitations in terms of uh, uh, our funding. What you propose is indeed better. But with the limited money, I seriously don't think you can do it. You only do three months, not even complete, then we are running out of money. That's why it cannot get be completed. That could be a valid reason as well. You get what I mean or not? Then, if you still think that what you think is the best solution, then you need to work with the professor closely to see whether you can find more money. <laughs> then your, your, your problem is solved. You get it now, okay? So you, you, you have to actually reach out to more people. So one way of reaching out to more people is like what? Okay, it's, it's just a suggestion. Huh? It may not be true, but depends on case by case. For example, right, okay? Okay, I'm working for Professor A, okay? I, I only had this amount of money, all right? And I know that, okay, professor just tell me, I, it's not that I disagree with your method, but that method will need a lot of money. Currently, we only have so limited funding. And then you need to work with the professor, find out more money, right? How? By either write a proposal to some of the organization outside where they will fund your research, or alternatively, you can find a collaborator mm, who are rich in money. <laughs> they can fund you, right? So there are many, many ways that you can actually go around with it, all right? But 
more important is that at the end of the at the end of the day, right? <clears throat> you must ensure that your methods are not easily being challenged, questioned, and then later, right, all your results, right, being you know pushed down because your methodology are not well planned. Make sense? Okay. So go 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 to your professor. Understand, all right, the scientific reason why he does not support your idea, all right? Rather than you know he he will not tell you just because I feel lah. No, he won't. All right. Even if he thinks so, he will tell you from my experience. Ah, then that is something val valid. Then you are going to read from some papers to prove that. All right. Uh, what he said is true. All right. Because everything can be documented. By the way, ah, uh, paper will document down the positive result, meaning to say, ah, uh, successful. Paper will also document down the negative outcome, meaning to say. They tried their method, proven that their method is not working. <laughs> okay, so you need to find both both sides of paper, right? To actually have a more complete understanding. So when so that when you go to a conference, all right, you meet a lot of people, right? People will ask you, have you ever think about this 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 method before? Then you say, yeah, there's a paper support this before, and it's proven not working. Why why why? Uh, so they are able to actually articulate the reason why. Then people, then you build good network with them. You know why people people know that. You are a researcher that think thoroughly, think critically. You get me out. So you are not a shallow person. Okay, so we need a uh, Boo Dian to explain. I don't know. <laughs> <To translate. laughs> stress, uh, stress on her. <laughs> I am already here, but, ah, okay. but I didn't hear it the full length. Okay, okay. So, it's okay. So, so, this this uh, question will let uh you'll let bu 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 explain first, okay. then the subsequent one you will exp you will translate. Okay. okay. Uh, you let uh, tadi sudah menangkap hmm. atau perlu dijelaskan lagi? Saya hanya bisa menangkap bagian awalnya saja, yaitu bertanya begini, bertanya kepada dia sendiri mengapa 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 kemudian di pas bagian akhir. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> ya karena pasti uh, berpikir juga bagaimana melaksanakan yeah. penelitiannya nanti ya. Yeah. Jadi intinya begini Yula. Jadi uh, Dr. Lim itu memberikan suggestion, memberikan tips-tips uh, uh, ketika ada masalah dengan uh, pembimbing. Itu yang pertama uh, yang bisa dilakukan adalah langsung menerima. Tapi kalau memang masih tidak bisa menerima, masih merasa bahwa apa yang dilakukan oleh Yula ini punya uh, scientific reason, punya alasan-alasan ilmiah. Kenapa dipilih metode penelitian yang itu? Uh, Yula bisa ngobrol lagi dengan dengan uh, pembimbingnya. Tanyakan kepada beliau uh, kenapa beliau menyarankan uh, kuantitatif. Padahal Yula ingin uh, kualitatif. Uh, Yula menjelaskan, bisa menjelaskan pada beliau uh, kenapa saya memilih kualitatif. Uh, dan uh, tanyakan juga kepada pembimbingnya. Kenapa harus melakukan kuantitatif? Barangkali dengan dengan beliau memilih kuantitatif, beliau juga punya scientific reason dan mungkin juga berdasarkan pengalaman beliau, beliau merasa bahwa penelitian yang dia lakukan akan lebih baik bila dilakukan melalui metode kuantitatif. Barangkali mungkin bukan scientific juga karena tadi Dr. Lim bilang barangkali dengan alasan-alasan lain seperti misalnya masalah waktu, masalah keuangan seperti itu. Dan yang ketiga, sebetulnya dengan dengan alasan-alasan yang diberikan oleh pembimbing Yola, itu juga bisa dimasukkan ke dalam reasoning ketika melakukan penulisan atau ketika nanti pas sidang. Jadi kenapa tidak dilakukan secara kualitatif? Karena misalnya dengan alasan 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, seperti itu Yola. Oke, okay. bisa ya gitu ya? Oke, okay. okay. nah, second, second question Dr. Lim dari Yola. Uh, uh, how to uh, uh, would you give uh, some tips on uh, articles to uh, be uh, what uh, tembus ke jurnal internasional how to uh, send uh, how to publish uh, article mm -hmm. in journal uh, international <coughs> journal yeah um, some tips for them to be able to to be published oh. by yeah, okay, sure. International okay, so Journal. That, okay, so we are going to change a little bit of about our agenda <laughs> because of the time. <clears throat> okay, so um, I did prepare some slides earlier, 
All right. Um, this is the slides that we are origin. This is the this is the agenda that we are going to cover. Right. I think we have done this. Okay. This is time with and without sharing. I think we have done this. Um, I don't think we have time to actually cover the Sitch journal. But let me talk about okay some tips on how to get published. Right. I think this one is something that I think is more relevant to to all of you. Right. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. In in the interest of time, right? Okay, it will not be uh, it will not be very comprehensive. But feel free to ask questions. Yeah, yeah. I need to actually hide this, uh, hide floating control panel. Yep. Okay, so everybody can see, right? Okay, so now, right? Okay, so this is a normal, or we so called the, the 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 publishing cycle, right? Which is a normal publishing cycle, right? So some of us, right, actually uh, talk talk from the very beginning, talking about the secure funding, how we conduct the research, right? That until but in the conduct of research itself, right? Actually, got a lot of questions that's being asked, and I would suggest that all of you go to the Sage Research Methods, Sage Journal. You know, all these are the great resources, right? To actually, you know, do to, to, to equip your 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 um your, your 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 research, right? Okay, with the right information. So just take it, okay? Sage Journal, right? The main task is equipping you with all the full text article, and Sage Research Methods is the place where like they give you. All right, the tips on every stage of research whenever that you face a challenge. Because every stage of research, right, even from the very beginning of like how you plan it, how you design your questions, how you would be able to select a method, how you collect the data, how you present the data, all these things, they are all available in SRM. So instead of going to Google or going to YouTube, you know, you find the information which you are not very sure whether they are authentic source or not, but you just come to one place, it's like a one-stop solution, easy for you. You just come to this place and then you just use it as simple as that. Mm -hmm. yeah? Okay, so the whole process actually begins with how you write your article and then until you submit your paper. But from here, okay, until you submit your paper, right, until peer review, right, we won't touch anymore because this is actually more of a publisher's question. Unless we have audience here today that you would like to become a reviewer, uh, then we can discuss a little bit more become how to be a reviewer. But for today, we are just talking about how you write your paper and how you submit your paper. Now, mm. when we want to start our tips of getting started, right? Number one is that, okay, never wait. <laughs> never wait, huh? okay? When you want to actually write your papers, right? Actually, it takes a long time. It takes a long time. And seriously, uh, my, my, my advice to all of you is that, okay, a lot of the time you will notice that it is very difficult to begin when you start to write a paper. It's rather difficult. A lot of times you will find that, um, you, you, you're just not feeling motivated, you get I me mean, okay, of actually starting their paper. So the most simple way is actually, I would suggest to all of you is that you write down, okay, a backbone, I mean, a framework, okay, of what you're supposed to write first. So write it down, that has introduction, that then I, maybe I have, a, uh, I, have a, uh, I have a methodology section, then I have a data collection, then I have a, conclu uh, I have a discussion, then I have a conclusion, right? Just write down the big section first. And then put whatever information that you have over the years into that section first. All right? Don't worry about the language first. Okay. But I'm making an assumption saying that we are all writing English paper. All right? Okay. So don't worry about the language first. You just put whatever information that you have into the paper first and form the backbone. Okay. This is very important. Number two, after that, right? Okay. You need to, as I told you earlier, right? You put it aside for two days, then you come back again. And then you rework on the whole thing. And you'll be very surprised, okay? You will actually have a brand new understanding about, oh, actually, I shouldn't put this here. I should put it down to somewhere else. Oh, this one actually should be written, okay? Oh, yeah, I got more information. Then you will add in. So as the time goes on, right, okay, you will realize that your paper started, started to actually become long, long, longer and longer. And it started to become more comprehensive and complete as the time goes by. Make sense? Okay, so go to actually our author gateway if you need some guidance and help, right? Now, mm. then once you have actually have the full body, right? Okay, the authorship, yeah. We only um, think about, okay, uh, the authors that, I mean, who's supposed to be going into the uh, authors? Always remember, your collaborators will go to the author, the one that actually contribute substantially in terms of the scientific contributions, but not those who only help you to brush up your English. <laughs> okay, remember just now I told you, right? Okay, we give it to somebody, right? Okay, to ask him or her to read and then whether he or she understand what I'm trying to write. Okay, if he if, if you are trying to say A and then you ask him and then he tell you B, then you know that you are not writing in the proper form. You need to rewrite. 
Okay, if you write A and after they give it to him and then he tell you, is, are you trying to write A? Then you say, yes, bingo. And then you know that you are in the right track. Does it make sense? Okay, so this is something that you have to um, kind of like, uh, but the, the, the author will help you to brush out your English, right? Usually we'll go to the acknowledgement sections, all right? Somebody who may help you just to process a graph, make it more visible, more visual, make it more colorful, make it more obvious, highlight, then that one all go to acknowledgement. It's only the scientific contributor can go into the authorship, become your collaborators, all right? Okay, then the next one that I would uh, give you some tips about how you choose a journal is always remember, right? You can look into what is the reputation of a journal. When we say reputation of the journals, right? A lot of times, right? I believe that all of us are actually look at the metrics of the journal to determine whether the, the, the journal is a good journal or not. And in the market, the most common one is, I would say, like, uh, impact factors. Uh, if not, you look into the uh, Schemaco journal ranking, right? From Scopus or site score from, uh, from, from Scopus, right? It's up to you, right? It's, it's really up to you that you which one you would like to refer to. Or alternatively, right, if the university has a requirement, all right, that all the paper that currently you submitted must have a impact factors, for example, then it's best that you guys go to check with the library, say that, is there a list of journal that you will recommend us to submit, all right? And this will actually also take away a risk, okay, a risk that commonly asked by our user. That is, what if I submit my paper accidentally to a predatory journal? You know what is a predatory journal? The journal out there to <laughs> try to con your money, right? They will tell you, you give me money, I will publish your paper. But they are not a real journal. You get me now, okay? They will publish somewhere, but nobody is going to cite it, right? No official researchers are going to use it because we all understand these are predatory journal websites, all right? And in fact, okay, is, uh, is that a lot of people fall into the trap? The answer is still yes. Okay, so, 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 so it's, 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 it's very unfortunate if happened that this happened. So the safest is that you engage your library to ensure that, okay, they will be able to help you to ensure that, okay, the journal that you submit, okay, is authentic, right? So if you are not very sure, always you can check the publisher as well, all right? You can submit to the, the, the official one. You can refer to those journal articles that you read often whereby you download the full text officially from the library, you know that it's under the subscription, right? Library cannot be subscri subscribing to all the predatory journal, right? So all these are authentic journal. So you, these are the journal that you read often, and therefore these are the journals that you can also do your submission. But if the university has a requirement that after you do the submission, you also need to kind of like provide a, 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 a matrix of impact factors to show your recognitions in the future for the calculation, and then you need to be very careful what journal that you would like to submit. Now, another thing is what we so-called the, the, the aim and scope. Now, you have to understand that uh, every journal okay, will tell you that their aim and scope, and this is very important. So, for example, today um, I go to, let's say, uh, these sections, right? Okay, um, I go to, okay, uh, no, this research method. Okay, so, for example, I go to uh, search, search journal, okay? And then right here, here, then I, I just simply search any journal, right? Okay, for example, I, I type autism, right? So under the autism, right, okay, I may be able to find a lot, a lot of journal article, right? Okay, but let's say I'm just bringing you, okay, into one of the journals, okay, that is related to autism from Sage Publishing, right? So if today you just look into all these, right, for example, okay, language and impairments, right? Okay, you look into this journal, right? Always remember, under this particular journal, all right, under the journal information, right, there's always, okay, something called the aim and scope. And this is something that you must always, all right, read carefully, right, what are the scope that they will cover? What are the scope that they are covered, right? You can see that we are particularly interested in the article that's on practical application, combined with high scientific rigor, paper that combined across, blah, 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 blah. They will, they will tell you, we will not accept paper they are solely on speech disorder, of staggering or stammering, right? Autism people, right? They were stag staggering, then they were st stammering, right? Uh, about bilingualism per se, and they address acquired language difficulties where the topic is about typical language development, linguistic, we know all this, blah, blah, blah. Now, so you have to read this very carefully. Be 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 if you do a research on autism and then, right, you just anyhow submit your article to this particular journal, just because the word autism appear on the title, uh, then you will get a rejection. 
you get what I mean or not. So this is something that you also need to be very careful, right? When you look into the aim and scope. And one of the common reason that, you know, uh, the paper got rejected, right? Is very often is because their aim and scope doesn't match. Okay, the aim and scope doesn't match well, all right? So they got like a desk, a desk rejection. Huh? It's, it's quite common. Now, editorial board is something that you can also look into it. Now, for example, sometimes, right, okay, you cited, okay, quite substantially the paper from the editor of the editorial board of the journal. Uh, then you know that, okay, when you use his or her paper, right, in your research, right, very often you will capture a greater attention from that particular person as well, all right? Peer review, all right, readership. Readership is more on to whether the journal that you submit will subsequently be widespread. Okay, so for here, for this part, right, I would suggest that you can actually look into, um, you can look into, okay, uh, Sage Journal, right? You can look into Sage Journal, for example, this journal, right? Okay, you look into the this little tab called Journal Indexing and Metrics. Under here, right, okay, you'll be able to identify, right, there's one, there's one section we call, okay, Readership as well as um, Abstract and Indexing, right? So you can see that, right, okay, they will tell you, in the prior calendar year, in total, how many papers of this journal has been downloaded? Some of them is very, very high. Then you know that this is a very impactful uh, mm -hmm. journal because they receive a great deal of downloads, meaning to say a lot of people are interested in the article that it published with it, right? And at the same time, more important is that you also look into where does it mm, index, right? This, because you know, a lot of university has subscription to Scopus, the web of science, right? So in that situation, right, you can know that how well it has been, the, the information will be disseminated to this university globally that has the subscription for this, All right? So this is another thing that you can consider. All right, then of course, the funding institution restrictions. Yeah. This one, we would like to mention, I think this one is more for open access, all right? For, for, for the time being, right, I think uh, it's less relevant to uh, Indonesia market, but let's say if you apply a global funding, and the funding body specifically says that your research papers needs to be open access, uh, then you need to be very careful. You cannot submit to a journal that's not open access, all right? You need to submit to a journal that accepts open access paper, right? So this one is something that you need to be very careful. Again, if you have questions, uh, <laughs> the easiest way, of course, reach, reach out to your library. And your library, if they're not sure, they will contact us, all right, and confirm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Preparing for the submissions, right? Okay. Now read and follow the manuscript submission guidelines. So where is the uh the manuscript submission guideline? Okay. So if I give you this example again, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Very simple. You go to here. You see this submission guideline. Okay. Mm -hmm. Journal information submission guideline. You click on the submission guideline. They will give you a very detailed okay explanation of what are the things that you must submit. Okay. You must be very careful. Okay including open access, what are the article processing charge, blah, blah, blah. How do you the, the component? What are the formatting? When you provide a figures, okay, how should the figures be like? What are the tables should be like? Is there any supplementary material? Do you allow to give supplementary material or they have to be put it as something like a, 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 a reference? Or what is the referencing style? So if you click on the referencing style, they will tell you, okay, please use the APA as a referencing style. If you use the wrong one, is that reject? <laughs> okay. But if you are using anything like, for example, EndNote or maybe Zotero, it's not difficult for you to just select the referencing style because they will auto uh, formulate for you, right? And mm -hmm. what are the manuscript okay, uh, criteria, so and so forth, okay? Read this carefully, right? Uh, and I mean it, right? You really have to read this carefully, okay? Because we do have a lot of um, authors, right, who don't even bother to read this. And then the editors, the editorial board, because they are actually the editorial board of these particular journals, right? They are very particular about whether you follow their rules and regulations, right? So if you do not, then again, they will throw back at you. They will say, oh, you know what? You didn't follow my referencing style. Please reformat the referencing style before submit to us. So there is a sp specific requirement that you must follow them, okay? Now, then number two is make every effort to improve the quality of a manuscript, okay? This one will involve many, uh, many areas, okay? Including, for example, remember I told you, grammar is the most common mistake that a lot of people, okay, do not take care. This is not just about the, the problem from within Asia. Even in the Western world, okay, um, not everybody's got 100 marks for their English test. <laughs> Even if today they are, the, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are the Westerner, right? They don't get 100 marks. Just like today, you are, you are, you, okay, for example, you guys are Indonesian. Do you get 100 marks for your Indonesian Bahasa test? <laughs> no, right? No. So it's the same thing, right? Not necessarily means that, okay, 
we are all you know talented in languages right so a lot of times right especially researchers we may not be talented in our in, in, in our language so when you try to write something where people don't have a this like this kind of communication face to face right is rather difficult trust me it's rather difficult so how are you going to write specifically accurately using words uh, this become very important so that's the reason why you have to actually ensure that the quality of the manuscript must be there so the common one is language right english is definitely one of them number one is the flow that really depends on practice as well so for example if today i often uh i would, I would like to submit uh, my, my 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 paper to let's say journal a right what i would suggest you to do is that you read more article from the journal a then you have a feel of how the people present the data in what kind of format and organization now i want to draw your attention to the keyword organization so meaning to say right when we organize the paper okay that is a flow Right. So you need to actually follow that flow in order to present your data okay, better. So you can go back to the SRM, search research methods, look into the, let's say, visualizations of data or maybe something like that. Because sometimes right, it's very difficult to write a long or lengthy paragraph, but instead it is easier for you just write or maybe just prepare a graph or maybe a picture okay, that will explain thoroughly what exactly you want to say. Make sense? All right. Then, of course, be objective about your work and include your submission, including, let's say, if you receive funding from outside the school, acknowledge them. Okay, any conflict of interest, okay, complete the ethics statement. Now, especially in social science and humanities, we do have, uh, we do need to take care about the ethics statements because um, it may involve some kind of like ethical issues and you need to have an ethical approval committee. So if you're not very sure where to find, right, okay, you can always come back to your six research methods. Okay, you can come to your search research methods, right? Under your SRM, right? Okay, you can actually type here to look into your articles or you can actually go to your research tool, Methods Map. But if you are young researchers and you just want to have something simple, you can always look into here called the, okay, research ethics, okay? Under your research ethics, right? We do have, okay, a lot, okay, quite, quite comprehensive explanation about, okay, the confidentiality of the, you know, the, 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 for example, the, 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 the participants, right? So what are the mm -hmm. risk assessment? How do you gain ethical approval for my research, etc.? They will give you, okay, quite, I would say, like, simple, okay, a succinct, okay, I will say, information that you'll be able to look into it as well, right? There's even video, I'll talk about it as well, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. I would suggest that you come here. But if you find that the information that you given to you is not deep enough, you can actually search more, whereby we'll go in, and then they will give you really, really, uh, the full text uh, to read. Uh. Then there's a lot of reading. <laughs> that needed from you. But I think here usually, right, okay, it's actually very uh, comprehensive. Yes, this is written by a, 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 a British author. Therefore, they will talk about the UK, the US. So in, in, in your local context, do you actually need to have, okay, something from your university? So here, for when you say your university, you can check with your uh, research office if there's anyone. Then you ask them, okay, do we actually have a, a research ethics committee that needs to approve, okay, when I touch on something that is more sensitive? You know what I mean? Like, for example, you need to protect the identity okay, of the participants who is uh, autism students, right? You cannot actually disclose the name. So what are the information that you collect? So what are the information that you do not need to collect if you, do not if you are not needed in your, in your research? So these are the things that you must be very careful, all right? Okay, then uh, also the aside from the research ethics side. Okay, so the next thing that you can actually talk about is the article structure. All right, so for some of you, if you think that this is helpful, feel free to actually uh, take a picture of this. Okay, so the introductions, right, naturally, you need to actually cover what is the purpose of the study. Remember, the purpose of the yeah. study actually goes back to the researchable question. At the end of the day, what do you want to find out? This becomes very important. And that also determines right, what is your contribution. If your research questions are very weak, meaning to say, right, it's very vague, okay, not very sure at what exactly you're trying to ask, then at the same time, right, okay, your contributions can really easily be challenged when it comes to the reviewer or come to the examination, all right? Then it really depends on whether you're solving an application research or you're solving a basic science. Application research is usually I have a real-life problem, I'm proposing something to address this problem. But in a basic science research, is very different. That means uh, I saw a phenomenon and I try to explain the phenomenon and therefore I come with a hypothesis that, oh, I guess there is a this kind of principle that actually explain this phenomenon that I'm observing. You get me? Okay, so that actually depends on what kind of actually uh, research that you are doing, all right? So what exactly you're trying to research and what questions that you're addressing. So they are actually linked together. Then the next session you will go in is actually, of course, your materials and the methods, right? So very simple. Number one, you must design your research. I'm going to solve this problem. 
I need to what kind of information that I need in order to solve mm. this problem. So do I have access to this information? All right. So um, if I want to access to this information, okay, does it need money? <laughs> How long do I need to actually plan it? For example, I want to do 1,000 uh, respondents okay, to respond to my survey. So you must be realistic. If I want to wait for 1,000, so that means uh, and not everybody will, will respond to my survey. So how many, how big the database that you are going to actually you know, send the email before some of them will respond? Then you need to talk to some of the people whom are experienced. Then they will tell you, you know, out of 1,000 email that you send, only let's say 30% will respond to you. So you know that, okay, I only have 300. So if I want 1,000, I need to send to, okay, a lot, a lot, a lot more people. You get I me? Mean? So that's the reason why you need to, then does he say, but that, is there a way that I can, I can expedite the, the process? Maybe they say, yeah, why not you give a gift? I give a voucher, okay? And then people will actually, I, I give an Amazon voucher, I give movie tickets, right? Can it be cheaper? Because if you want to give a movie ticket and your target patients or your or participants are, uh, are, are senior citizen, it's not attractive to them, right? Uh, then, but if today you are targeting at the young, okay, the, the youngster, which you age about, let's say, 15 to, let's say, 25, then maybe a movie ticket is more attractive to them. So from there, you can also design, okay? So can you actually design it properly so that you can save the limited funding that you have? So all the things that you have to actually consider. Then, of course, after that, you collect the data, and then, right, you have to actually ensure that you only collect what is needed, right? So you need to actually have the ethical approval. You collect what is needed, what is not needed, you're not supposed to collect. And then at the end of the day, you also need to prove that how I, I, I safe keep the data so that the data will not leak, right? So should there be any leaking of the data? What should I do, all right? So here are the, all the things. Then after the end of the research, how are you going to deal with the data? Is the data open to the public or is the data is just really closed? Or how am I going to destroy the data so that no, 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 no further questions can be, you know? So that I protect the privacy okay, of the entire research. So here are the things that, especially in the social science field, that they need to consider. The next thing that I hope you move on, then you will talk about the results. Under the results, right, then you need to actually start to discuss. So, but before you talk about the, the result, you need to present the data. And present the data, right? Okay, I think one of the things that okay, you can consider is about the data visualization. As we mentioned, we mentioned, right? Maybe you no, know, a picture. Okay, a picture paints a thousand words, right? So instead of writing a lengthy paragraph, maybe you will just show a few graphs and then use different colors, make it very obvious so that people can understand exactly what you're trying to say. So after you present the result, the more important part is discussion. So now you're really going to actually slice by slice discerning the entire okay, research output. Do you get what you want? Okay, or do you didn't get what you want? Okay, does the outcome actually explain what you expected to, to, to be explained, right? So is it, is it okay, uh, does the question at, or at the first very, at the introduction that you ask has been answered here or never been answered, okay? If there's not been the answer, why? So sometimes, if times permit, you may want to redo it because halfway you may realize something is wrong, but sometimes if you plan it well, if you're an experienced researcher, maybe one time is good enough, right? So at the end, right, you have to actually draw a conclusion. That means that you need to resonate back, okay? What does the research implicate? And more very importantly, you need to answer this question. At the end of the day, what are the contributions that you have made to this particular research, right? In answering that particular questions, right? But for a very, I would say, more uh, well-planned research, the, most of the time, you also need to actually include what are the future recommended studies that you would like to give it to the audience. So meaning to say, okay, I, I, I did my research based on these assumptions, right? So maybe in the future, people can add on this, 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 right? By having a more in-depth, understanding or insights of a particular thing, right? So this is about the recommendation because you understand what is the limitations that you are, you are, you are doing for this particular research. So after you found out something, then what will be the next step? So you will recommend for somebody to do it, right? But it is not compulsory, right? Okay, for the next step. Okay, remember just now we mentioned about the keywords. Okay, so the keyword search itself, right, is something very important because the keyword search itself, right, is something that it will actually affect, okay, whether how well your article is being indexed and being actually extracted, okay, from Google Scholar or maybe from PubMed or maybe from any other place in the world. So, if your paper is, so it, that, that you have to ensure that your keywords are well inserted, okay, and spread distributed, okay, in a very, okay, nicely right, across the entire flow of the of, of, of the article, right? But the repetitions, the, the repetition rate of the keyword is also important because you don't want to be overly use it so that it becomes something become people know that you're trying to manipulate, but at the same time, the flow of the natural flow of the language must be there, all right? And always keep users in mind. Meaning to say, right, you are not writing a paper for yourself to read, but you're writing a paper for the readers, someone who don't understand your work to read. So the best thing is you give it to someone, not your collaborator, to read and ask them back, 
what do you understand from my paper? If that person cannot understand what you're writing, then you know that you need to rework on the paper again. If the person can give you a good summary, then you know that you're successful, right? In delivering your message, right? So mm. there are a couple, a couple of common mistakes to, to avoid. That means that you may e. not really read. Ki, sorry. Um, Bu Dian, gimana? Apa waktunya masih yeah. cukup? Sebelum Atau oh, kita sudah lewat ah, time limit itu sudah okay. over. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. About uh, 10 minutes over the time limit. <laughs> yes, <that's> <laughs> But uh, I think the uh, participants uh, needs to know about the tips. Uh, but actually, um, can we uh, get the presentation? Your presentation, Dr. Lin. About okay, this? this slide. This slide is 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 available here. I'm going to show you how you download the slide. Okay, it's on our website. Okay, so you guys just come to okay. Um, uh, you you. You know. Okay, so remember we have this uh journal author gateway. Right, okay. How to get published resources here. Okay, in the how to get published resource here, right? I get this how to get published webinar, right? Okay. So for this for this thing, right? Okay, you can actually watch this recording here, right? I, and and it, it explained that and you can watch it unlimited time and the webinar presentation the slide is actually here okay, okay. click okay. here okay. okay so i'm going to paste the the link here to all of you uh where is the wait now okay stop sharing okay i'm going to paste it here to all of you you can go to this link here right and download watch the recording as well as download the slides Okay, all the informations are inside. There are real uh, editorials, give you good suggestions and tips as well. Okay. All right, uh, so you can actually watch it there as well. Okay, I think okay. this is helpful. Okay, mm. jadi uh, Bapak Ibu semua peserta sekalian, uh, silakan untuk mengakses uh, tadi link yang sudah diberikan oleh Dr. Lim di mm -hmm. uh, uh, situs uh, Stage Pub untuk mendapatkan semua sumber-sumber yang tadi sudah diberikan oleh Dr. Lim. Uh, jadi, uh, karena kita juga sudah lewat waktunya, sudah uh, 10 menit lewat dari waktu yang kita tentukan di awal, uh, saya tidak akan banyak menerjemahkan apa yang disebutkan, uh, yang sudah dijelaskan tadi Dr. Lim. Uh, kita juga sudah, uh, untuk part ini, untuk tips-tips bagaimana kita mempublish uh, jurnal kita, uh, Bapak-Ibu semua nanti bisa lihat, kita uh, saat ini sedang live di Youtube, jadi Bapak-Ibu semua bisa nonton lagi uh, setiap saat, oh. setiap waktu. Uh, hanya bagian uh, tips ini saja. Okay. Uh, baiknya, baiklah Bapak Ibu sekalian. Sepertinya uh, demikian saja penjelasannya. Kita terpaksa untuk uh, menyudahi sesi ini, walaupun ada beberapa agenda yang tidak sempat tersampaikan ya Stefania. Tapi tidak apa, eh. karena sebetulnya bagian uh, untuk jurnal dan lin itu sebenarnya sudah jadi bagian dari uh, kelas literasi informasi kita. Jadi memang kita selalu memberikan materi-materi itu how to access uh, jurnal okay. by search maupun dari terbitan yang lain. Uh, ada, sebelum saya tutup, ada beberapa uh, yang perlu kita garis bawahi dari dari penjelasan Dr. Lim tadi yaitu jangan jangan pernah berhenti untuk berpikir kritis dan uh, membaca dan membaca dan membaca jangan pernah berhenti membaca karena ketika untuk seorang peneliti ketika mereka berhenti ber membaca artinya mereka sudah menutup segala kemungkinan untuk bisa berpikir berpikir kritis dan untuk bisa membuat sebuah penelitian yang baik seperti itu uh, baik terima kasih banyak thank you very much Dr. Lim for the insightful uh, session Stefani juga terima kasih banyak atas uh, yeah, maaf banget bu tidak apa nggak <laughs> direncanakan mati lampu iya, tidak apa baiklah saya kembalikan kepada MC Mangga Ibu Isma terima kasih terima kasih Dian. kepada Ibu Dian Bapak Ibu hadirin yang berbahagia kita telah sampai di penghujung acara Terima kasih banyak kepada narasumber, moderator, serta para peserta yang masih menyimak dari awal sampai akhir. Semoga ilmu yang didapat bermanfaat dan dapat mempermudah dalam proses penelitian Bapak Ibu dan rekan-rekan mahasiswa semua. Saya ingatkan kembali untuk mengisi link daftar hadirnya yang ada di chat Zoom. Mohon tidak salah input nama dan email karena sertifikat akan dikirim secara otomatis melalui email Bapak dan Ibu Paling lambat satu jam setelah Bapak Ibu mengisi daftar hadirnya. Marilah kita tutup acara ini dengan mengucapkan hamdalah bersama-sama. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Amin. Thank you. Thank you everyone.
Mohon maaf apabila ya. ada kata yang kurang berkenan. Akhir kata, wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much, Karim, for your discussion today. Yeah. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Panitia, apakah akan ada foto bersama untuk ke sesi ini? Boleh dibuka dulu semuanya uh, kameranya barangkali uh, dari Panitia akan melakukan screenshot. Untuk setiap your time, page. it's your time. Iya, yeah, it's your time. Nah, ini setelah ini harus ada bukti kehadiran. Yeah. <laughs> ya, Steph ya. Iya, yeah, walaupun telat ini saya, aduh. <laughs> Silakan dibuka semuanya kameranya. Nanti mungkin bisa bikin sesi berikutnya, saya Steph. Untuk ah, jelas. semoga bisa dirutinkan Jalan, ya. kegiatannya. Iya, yeah, amin. Satu, dua, tiga. Lanjutnya. Banyak Bu Isma. Ada berapa frame? Ada tujuh. Tujuh, tujuh frame luar biasa. Aduh, banyak. Delapan. Satu, dua, tiga. Satu, dua, tiga. Tadi yang belum tersampaikan itu yang open akses ya. Ah, iya. ah, bisa iya bisa tolong di email ke saya nanti saya coba kasih jawab. Ah. Ya maksudnya untuk uh, next uh, ini webinar berikutnya. Oh oke. Okay. Uh, key, there's there will be another webinar because you're doing it too good. So they're asking for another. <laughs> about about the plan, okay? uh, about what? Because different in, thing. in your agenda, you you mentions about the open source access things, yeah. The access, so you may uh, share maybe with us in the next session, yeah. Next session. <laughs> okay. We will plan the agenda. jam loh. <laughs> <laughs> iya, lo kirain waktu itu tadi kirain dua setengah jam lama banget, tapi nggak cukup. Nah, kurang. <laughs> kurang loh. <laughs> Udah nih selesai. Sudah selesai, Bu Isma. Sudah selesai, Bu. Oke. Okay. Okay. Baik, baiklah Bapak Ibu sekalian sesi picture time sudah selesai. Terima kasih banyak atas kehadirannya. Yeah, I will get Makasih Bapak Ibu. Ibu. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih Bu Lucu. Thank you very much. Terima kasih Steph. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, terima kasih. Yeah. Terima kasih semuanya. Okay. Thank, thank you Dr. Lee. Thank you. 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 We actually have in this group. Thank you. Yeah, untuk pertanyaan yeah. yang belum terjawab nanti dikirim ke Steph. Ya. <laughs> <laughs> Bagi yeah. tukang jawab tuh, Steph. Iya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. Kasih. Udah habis nih? Ya, listrik ya? Sama, sama, sama ini aja di, di apa, di, dihantikan. Di lift, di end meeting nih sama... Sama host. Apa namanya? Sama host. Silakan host. Hostnya kemana? Dijuh sholat tuh lah. <laughs> ya, saya duluan ya. Kasih. Harapan hostnya. Mohon pisan. Izin live ya. Mangga Pak Mangga. Moderator. <laughs> Thank you.